Thanks, Maude. Thanks for having me. I am so honored to be here, and I am so intimidated. <laughs> and because I know how much I sucked as a writer at 13, <laughs> and I'm here, and I'm sitting right here, and I'm, and I'm hearing about the whole sort of aesthetics of women assuming identities to, to fu function in this world. And I'm being told by the person, you know, um, before me, and I'm like, God, it took me almost 38 years to figure that one out. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm so intimidated and I am, and I'm so honored to be a part of this program. Yes, secretly, I do wish there was a boys right now. We really do need it, <laughs> you know, but the thing that struck me about the reading so far, and, um, and I'm sure the ones that will come, is the fearlessness of it. And you'd be very, you, you'd be surprised, certainly as you get older, just how essential that is, and how much you should latch on to that. Not just to break your own taboos, but to, to, to speak the stories that aren't being told. I said in an interview, not told the right way. Because sometimes, you know, a, a story is dying for your voice to tell it. I tell some of my students all the time, they'll say, but, you know, there are thousands of writers, there are hundreds of writers. Yeah, but there's only one you, you know, and nobody can tell the story as exactly as you would tell it. So I'm really, really impressed and I'm really happy that, you know, you guys are telling your stories and telling them at such an early age. Um, the best advice I give people is also the most cliched advice I give people, which is to believe in yourself. For no other reason than if you're a writer, and write, all the writers in here know this, if you're a writer, it's essential to believe in yourself because you will come across that situation where you're the only one who does. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Usually by about 13 when your mom goes, aren't you going to get a real job? How are you going to get a real job with this? You know, I, I, meet stu I meet parents every, every semester, I meet parents and I introduce myself as, I'm the one who's ruining your children's lives. Because <laughs> I'm the one who said, nah, you don't want to be a nuclear physicist, go on right. You know, you know why, why, why would you think a poet is not going to be successful? Of course you're going to be successful. <laughs> Put down that Bunsen burner right now. <laughs> you know, so. So I already have a bad enough reputation, so let me stop. Um, I'm going to read um, a part of, from the Book of Night Woman. Um, and you know, it, 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 I can tell it was very hard finding a PG part of this book. <laughs> you know, and it's, I think it's important here because um, Back then, the stakes were so high, just if you were a woman in the 1800s, the 1700s, 1800s, worse, if you were a slave, um, anything that had to do with any form of development of your man was just fraught with peril. And one of the things, the, the Book of Night Women is about a bunch of women who plot a slave rebellion, but when they are recruited, the first thing the head um, slave does, and her name is Homer, the first thing she does is teaches them how to read. So you have, and, and you have this sort of posse of seven, eight women, you know, all who know how to go into the master's estate and just look and read upside down so they know who's going to be sold and who's so on. And that alone gives them a type of power where they literally start to decide who lives and who dies. It doesn't end very well. But, so I'm going to read, um, this is a scene where Lilith, and Lilith is the main character in, in the, the novel, and the most of the story is about what happens to her. And this is a scene where Homer is talking to her. Homer comes to visit her one night. A lot of circumstances happen way where they're thrown together. And so I'm going to go into that for a second, well, for a couple of minutes. Um, warning, the, end, the novel is told in slave dialect. Don't let that stop you from buying it when you leave here. <laughs> you know. So I'm going to read it in, the, in that dialect, because this is how, I hope, this is how you know, they spoke at that time. 